um, a cinema discovery actually made headlines all around the world when uh, the most complete version of Fritz Lang's M was discovered in a film vault in Buenos Aires. Uh, and the story made international headlines, and it was written up unfairly uh, by the, the international media as sort of a lucky break. These, these bumbling Argentines stumbled across Lang's film in their municipal uh, film vault. Uh, that, that was all BS. The true story was that this one man, Argentina's greatest cinephile, Fernando Martin Peña, uh, had tracked that print of Metropolis for 20 years. And he's a relatively young man. Right. Uh, so it was a, he knew it was there, but he just couldn't get to it because of all the bureaucracy and all these institutions in Argentina. Uh, I fortuitously met Fernando when I was vacationing with my wife uh, in Buenos Aires in 2008. And uh, we have become not just good friends, but really, really important, uh, simpatico colleagues. And Fernando has introduced me to a world of Argentine cinema that I, nor anyone else outside of Argentina, inside of Argentina even, really knew much about. Um, so we were able to get the original negative of El Vampiro Negro, uh, a, a print made, a preservation print made of that film because I was so blown away by it when Fernando showed it to me in a 16 millimeter copy that he had, um, that I said, we have to preserve this film. So a, a laboratory in Buenos Aires did make, uh, they pulled a print from that deter rapidly deteriorating original negative. Uh, and it almost didn't get through the printer. Uh, but we were able to actually get a, a copy of this here, which we have shown in this festival previously. I think it was in 2012. But that was just a preservation print. There was no restoration involved at all. And if you were maybe here that night, you will remember that there were a lot of scenes in that film where you could see the decomposition on screen uh, vividly. <coughs> And it was quite distressing. And our colleagues at the UCLA Film and Television Archive, mm. uh, we decided whatever it takes, eventually we wanted to have the money to do a full restoration of this film. Uh, so fast forward a few years, and uh, finally this happens, but by the time the HFPA comes into the picture, uh, that original negative is now completely gone. It's done. And so we had a, a fine grain that was made from that that ended up being the best source for this restoration. But we learned that it was going to be impossible to do this photochemically because there was just too much damage and in so many places the emulsion had actually pulled away uh, from the film because it had been wrapped too tightly. Uh, if you were here earlier today, Serge Bromberg did a beautiful job explaining how all that stuff happened. Uh, and, and it was just really, really damaged, almost to the point where we didn't think this project was going to even be possible. The film just had to soak in a chemical bath for a long, long time just to be supple enough to handle. Uh, and eventually it was decided that the restoration had to be done digitally because there were, that was the only way we were gonna fix some of the problems in this film. And I am absolutely thrilled to say uh, that the Hollywood Foreign Press, who for years has been a valued colleague partially funding restorations that we've done, uh, came through with the full budget for this film, all $90,000 that it took to get El Vampiro Negro back on the screen the way it looked when it was originally made. So it has been a long process and one that I think was extremely valuable because I really do feel this film is like a missing link in, uh, in cinema history uh, just because it is Fritz Lang's M reimagined uh, in Buenos Aires in a, in a very different way. So now I'm going to show you quickly just to, to give credit where credit is due. I also want to thank Scott McQueen at UCLA and Vincent Perosi at Roundabout and uh, for all of their stewardship on this project. Uh, and you're going to see some examples right now. Of course, my, uh, my computer here just went there. I got to put the um, okay, here we go. And we're going to show you five clips before and after, and I will attempt to explain uh, exactly what these problems are, and you will see how they have been dealt with. 
Okay, we're ready, with, ready when you are, CB. In this first clip that you're going to see, um, you're going to notice this is from early in the film. And we picked these clips so there will be no spoilers. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Okay, here we go. In this first clip, early on in the film, you're going to see a lot of orbital movement, which is this weaving uh, and buckling. That is due to very heavy vinegar syndrome that uh, affected the film, which is like uh, acetic acid decay. Mm. This, this makes the uh, acetate in the, uh, the film uh, very soft and deformed. Things are starting to dislodge from the film, and uh, there's a thing, plasticizers, that are leached out. And then the after, you can see that that has been digitally removed, I'm very happy to say. <clears throat> this is Roberto Escalera. You'll, you'll see him. Uh, he, he is the prosecutor in this film. The man is a monster. He must be punished. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, in the second clip, this is uh, Nathan Pinzon, who is playing the Peter Lorre role in this film, and you're going to see in this clip heavy dirt, a lot of scratches, and some examples of emulsion loss, where you just see these, these blobs appearing on the screen. We're not going to show you how this little clip ends, however. You have to wait. And then you'll see this is wow. the restored version of this scene. Nathan Pinzon, by the way, was a comedic actor in Argentina, and this film changed his career dramatically because the director, uh, Roman Vignoli Barreto, uh, cast him. It, it would be the equivalent of casting, like in 1957, casting Jerry Lewis as a child killer. <laughs> <laughs> 